All right, welcome back. Back to the tour, back to Denmark, back to painting. So we're into the final stage being run. Well, there was a little stumble on the line, but anyway, so we're in the final stage that the race will be raced in Denmark. Actually gonna take an early um, rest day. I have a three rest days instead of the normal two. Of course, not that it's gonna be a rest day. Everybody's gotta get from Denmark over to the northern coast of France. But still, needs must. And just, if you've looked at some of the paintings at my on my blog, theartofcycling.blogspot.com, you'll see just how many thousands and thousands of Danes have been on the side of the road watching. The first time the tour has ever come so far north to Denmark. And the fans definitely showed up to show their appreciation doesn't hurt that uh, one of their own, one of the Danish riders is leaving Denmark in the mount, the uh, polka dot jersey of the mountain, best climber. They've been pretty small mountains. Denmark is pretty darn flat, but nevertheless, to have one of your own in a leader's jersey just makes it that much more exciting not only for the rider but for the fans along the road so what I'm working on right now is um, Andre Baguli one of the um, quick step riders has just had a flat tire and his mechanic has switched the wheel and giving him a nice push which is completely legal get him back up to speed after the change. What you can't accept is like, particularly on a mountain stage is when the fans will wanna help push you up the mountain and you've got to figure out some way to discourage them from doing that. Nor can you hold onto the side of the car as you're going up a mountain. That can get you disqualified, I forget. I know someone got thrown out of the tour last year for doing just that. But this is just a quick little push to get Andrea back up to speed after having the change. And that is tolerated, <laughs> allowed. I'm not sure if the rules actually state it's okay, but it's certainly tolerated. So it's, um, bike changes are not quite what they used to be. Now, when I first started riding bikes, of course, when I first started riding bikes, everything was, all the wheels were bolted on. But then there was, you know, race bikes and better bikes had quick release wheels and made changing your flat tires a lot easier, and particularly for a tour or any other race, a quick, wheel change is important. And now with the disc brakes, it's ironic that we're back to uh, bolt on wheels and some teams using a cordless drill with a Allen socket on it to get the um, wheel on more quickly and others will just, you know, do it old school and use a Allen key. But um, it's tough to have a quick wheel change nowadays. And a lot of times, like particularly, and unfortunately, Baguli doesn't fit into this category, but the team leaders will um, frequently, they'll just give them, give them their spare bike and then once the rider is back on their way, they will just change it, change the tire and have his team, 
his main bike ready to go again. Now you may hear the TV in the background. My wife is in the other room watching some uh, discussions about theater and film. Something that she does. Look her up on IMDb. She's uh, Bridget Gethins, G E T H I N S. So if you're curious about the other arts going on in this house, besides fine art, besides painting, we also have the visual arts, I mean the performing arts. So now I'm going to start laying in the color, as always, working um, light to dark with uh, watercolors. It's very easy to turn it into mud by just um, trying to... That's another thing you also sort of have to be aware, like now that's wet, like I just... That was a mistake. I just used the ink and I didn't give ink time to dry. So the um, water picked up the ink and made a little mess. So I'm with watercolors, and I'm sure I've said this before, but it bears repeating, is that there is no erasing when using watercolors. So if you make a mistake, you either start over or accept the thing that isn't quite what you meant it to be. But you can see here like where that ink was plenty dry, I um, didn't pick it up. So just laying in the um, skin tones for both the mechanic and the Italian writer. making sure he was Italian but um, and now we sort of start thinking about color balance and when you conceive of the image that's something you need to work at so you know a good strong painting has um, a pair of complements has a color scheme to it for those who don't know complementary colors are colors that are across each other on the color wheel so this Little bit of a Danish flag that you can see being waved by a spectator will give us a nice red that will balance against the um, the green that I'll be laying in here in just a moment. So, and of course, now the other thing is, you know, like right now, you can't see my source material. And of course, you know, the viewer, once this painting is done, will never know what you actually paint it from. So, in the real world, This particular person was wearing a black and white striped shirt, but I felt like a little color would help, particularly because there is a lot of black in this image, naturally, or in the real space. So I thought I would um, change that and see, that's my prerogative. You'll never know. The viewer will never know. The purchase will never, purchaser, should anyone choose to purchase this. And should you be interested in that, all the work is available. You can either go to my blog, theartofcycling.blogspot.com, and there you can sort of read the story and know about the artwork more. And also, or you can go directly to my website, gregleach.com, and I'll, I'll write these in the description, so don't feel obliged to remember it right now. But anyway, 
You know, so if somebody chooses to have this, this the painting should stand on its own and it's not dependent on um, local color. That was the word I couldn't think of earlier. So local color is you know, sort of the real color of the image, for lack of a better word. So I'm trying to work on the um, Quickstep Apple Vinyl has gone to this fade kit now, so it starts with this pale blue and then gets progressively darker as it goes down the suit from the shoulders down to the um, shorts. So I have already broken my rules. I'm laying in some of this dark right now. And of course, you know, it's the thing about art. And that's, I'll digress a minute. So, you know, in art, you need to learn all the rules. You need to learn the color theory. You need to learn what goes with what. You need to learn anatomy. Really seriously study it. You know, figure out what the skeleton does and how the muscles roll across the skeleton and what moves what and what flexes. Study the figure. Paint from life. Draw from life. You can probably find a sketch group in your neighborhood if you're near college or a sizable town. You can usually find a group that will chip in and share a model. So you can really look, you know, it's like I go out and sketch in public a lot, but you know, they're not models. They're not going to stay still for me. And so a lot of times you're sort of filling in the details as the person leaves or, you know, whatever. But, so, but you study, 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 you look, 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 and learn the rules of color, learn your color wheel, learn everything that works together, learn how the body goes together, learn the golden mean, the rules of composition, and then you can break them. But you need to do that out of knowledge. It's like, you know, if you give enough monkeys paint, they may actually make a good painting sometime, but that's sheer luck. And what you want to be able to do is, out of knowledge, create something and know what you're creating. I mean, there's always discoveries and things that didn't go as planned. Oftentimes, those are the ones that I really like. The paintings that I didn't know what was going to happen. <laughs> I didn't know how it was going to play out. And even like in the large paintings, spending a little bit of time being lost, you know, something very satisfying and that, can I save this painting? <laughs> but that's, you know, it's, that's the, um, you know, I make paintings because I'm learning things and my paintings teach me and each painting is another opportunity to learn. And so that's what motivates me to do the next one. I am never 100% satisfied. with anything I do, but conversely, you're not gonna see it if I'm not happy with it. <laughs> if I think it's a failure, it doesn't get a social media post, it doesn't get out of the studio, in the case of one of these, like, and it, it happens, I'll take one of these and go, well, that was a complete disaster, and just throw it away, because there's, like with my oil stick paintings and some of the other videos on this, you'll see some of my oil stick pieces and you'll see them if you go to the website. I can save it and paint over it. In fact, one of my more significant paintings 
from last year, which dealt with the Black Lives Matter protests, was painted over an existing painting. And I was never particularly happy with that painting, but it gained more significance because it was painted over a painting that included the Lee Monument, which has now been removed as a result of those protests or an outgrowth. So you can see here I'm working on the greenery in the background. And so that green, like you've got this big expanse of green, but these couple of red zips kind of balance all of this green. And so when you're building the painting, you're not necessarily trying to get, in fact, you never want to get an equal, like all the information this thing is to that side, but that gives this guy more energy in his push. You know, you don't ever want to have everything equal. You want to have it offset. He's wearing his team branded mask. And then, um, so now all I have to do is lay in the road. There's a hair in my mixing area. So of course I was, it was too green, so I added some purple and I added too much purple and back and forth, back and forth. Yeah, there we go, now we're too green again. <laughs> Something's weird. Okay, so we're just, that's too dark. Let's see, I can just pick up more water and drag it out. Do it again, pick up a little bit more water because I know that was gonna be too dark. And I'm just really sort of floating it along. really using the water part of the watercolor. So that's this piece, well, almost that piece. A little bit of shadow on this um, post on the side of the road. A little shadow on the, a little bit of the roadway here on the front of the bike. Back to pick up a little bit more shadow to get the underside of his sleeve just to help distinguish it. All right, and then I usually don't come back and do this, but poor guy's ear is gone. There. So there we go. So that's this piece. Again, give us a like. Thumbs up. Would appreciate it. Love to hear what you think about it and think about all of the artwork. And I see another thing I didn't do. And uh, again, check out the blog, theartofcycling.blogspot.com and my website, gregleach.com. You can find me on TikTok at The Art of, Art of Cycling, just Art of Cycling, and you can find me on Instagram as Greg Artist. But thanks for the time, appreciate it.